Right up. Well, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for uh, coming to uh, Kedron for the Daily Roundup. I start this morning uh, by making a very sad announcement, and uh, it's with great sadness that we advise there has been a fatal traffic crash out on the Western Road at Tara, where a uh, driver of a, uh, of a truck hauling precious water for Condamine uh, has died. Uh, that matter is currently under investigation. That tragedy uh, is weighing very heavily on uh, the, the family and also the residents of uh, Condamine. And our thoughts and uh, our prayers are with the family and also the community uh, who this person was working uh, to assist in their time of need. But we further details available from uh, police media later. Just to uh, provide an update, the Fitzroy River is currently at 9.15 metres, remaining steady, and now it's a case of waiting for the floodwaters in town to flatten out. And as it flattens out, so uh, the, the recovery can start to move underway as the waters start to recede. This is a very uh, long flood, and in other words, the waters will take some time to go down. They're not expected to, to go down below uh, major flood levels for at least a week, and so we're asking people to be patient in that regard. As you're aware, last night there was a weather pattern, a rogue weather pattern over the Sunshine Coast Burnett area where large amounts of rainfall, we believe up to about 200 millimetres in some cases, have fallen in the area, as a result of which in the Meribur and Gympie areas a number of roads have been cut, including the Bruce Highway. A number of evacuations were conducted throughout the evening I am advised that a lot of those uh, people have uh, now returned to their premises and there's some expected uh, inundation of, uh, of a low number of houses and also some businesses in that area. Uh, police are keeping a very close eye on that along with the other emergency services personnel and the local disaster management groups in both those areas have stood, stood up, they are activated and are meeting and looking at the response in regards to that particular flooding. In St George, the current level is rising. It's slowly. It is just over 13 metres. The revised impact for St George is a 13.4 metre height, but again, an elongated flooding time, and it is expected that flood waters won't recede for or start to recede for some days. This will then have ongoing effects down in Dirrambandi and Thallon, and we are advised that the flood waters in those areas. Uh, could be a, around for as long as uh, the end of the month. So uh, we're still a long way uh, to go before this state is uh, actually uh, fully in the recovery phase. And we still have various parts of the state in different phases of the disaster management system. I'll, I'll pass over to uh, Warren Britson from Emergency Management Queensland. Warren. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's timely now for us to reflect on what is actually happening around us with our state emergency service volunteers particularly. And there's large numbers of those volunteers out there assisting the community and we are strategically managing how we uh, deploy those people. But the weather event that the superintendent just spoke about that happened last night, there can be more of those as the wet season progresses. So I'm asking the community to prepare themselves for what could happen to them uh, as the wet season continues. Whatever a person can do to prepare themselves in their home will make it much easier on the state emergency service um, as we get into this wet season. Now, I'm not saying that our numbers are stretched at the moment. We are strategically managing where we place the state emergency service volunteers, and we do have sufficient volunteers ready to assist. But if people can help themselves, it will make it much easier on, on my state emergency service volunteers who are extremely busy in particular locations. Today we welcome some people from New Zealand to give our volunteers some more assistance. Uh, the Minister met them at the airport and they are now on their way out into the southwest region to help communities recover. Thank you. Just while you're there, can you all tell us um, whereabouts the New Zealand volunteers are known and what, are they is like the equivalent of like SES volunteers or what are their expertise? Uh, yes, they have the equivalent expertise of our state emergency service volunteers. They are all about assisting their community back in New Zealand in times of need, and that's what they're going to do here. We're shipping them, sorry, wrong word, we are transferring them today to uh, Condamine, 
So that's where they're going to assist our state emergency service volunteers in Condamine. How many? Uh, Fifteen persons arrived from New Zealand. And when you say people should be prepared, people in Brisbane as well? Everywhere in Queensland. We ask everyone to be aware that this is the beginning of the wet season. There are many months of it to come yet. And anything that people can do to make themselves and their house prepared for a wet season will ease the burden on my state emergency service volunteers. Can I ask you about Maryborough and uh, what is a fairly sudden and unexpected flood peak that's coming down the Mary River? Uh, yours? Yes, we're uh, advised that uh, there is a peak of around about 9.3 at the moment. The uh, local disaster management groups are meeting to discuss that as we speak, and we're expecting to get more details uh, from the disaster district coordinators later today. It's a major flood peak, though? It is considered to be uh, in that area, moderate to major, and uh, we're looking very closely at that. Again, a lot will depend on uh, topography and also... Uh, the impacts of other streams. So we're, we're talking with hydrology from the Bureau of Meteorology and also uh, to the local disaster management groups. When is it meant to be, um, because at the moment I think it's only 6, when I say only, but it's 6.2, when is it meant to get to that 9, nine metre mark? Um, have you got the, what do you call that one? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, thank you. Tomorrow, yes. Time. We, don't, we don't have a specific time. All sure. we're told is it tomorrow, but again, as as it starts to move, so the uh, measuring stations will pick that up and we'll be able to uh, gauge that. In the past, when it has hit, the Mary seems to go up and down quite quickly. Um, when it's hit that 9 metre, can you tell us the impact that's been in the past? Well, that modelling at the moment, uh, they, they've spoken to us that there were five houses and a, a small number of businesses that were impacted in the previous events. We're actually now waiting for uh, revised modelling to look at what this actually means in real terms to uh, to the community. Can you tell us last time it reached that, when it did have that impact of the five houses and what uh, That was back in, I think, 1992. I think they referred to that being the other flood model. And overnight in the South Burnett, there were a few communities that, I mean, people I've spoken to said they... they <coughs> Life and, and mm. leave property. That's correct, yeah. There were, um, I think in one particular case, 12 people were evacuated from a very small number of uh, homes and uh, they were taken to a place of safety. They have uh, since been returned. But you are right, uh, floodwaters do rise very rapidly, especially where there has been very heavy and unexpected falls. And uh, as my colleagues have indicated, this was actually a, like a rogue storm, so to speak, which has come in and deposited a large amount of water. We now know that that is currently offshore. Uh, we are watching that pattern very closely. Uh, we believe that that pattern may then cross uh, tomorrow up and around the Gladstone area. So we're still doing a lot of work in that particular area to keep a track of that particular rain system. Central Queensland could have, a, have these systems move through as well. Look, anything is, is possible. Um, again, with the forecasting that far away, we're not too sure whether that will impact on the uh, on central highlands uh, or in central Queensland. At the moment, it has been flagged to uh, be just south of uh, Gladstone. We're keeping an eye on that, and as those uh, messages change, so obviously we'll get that out into the community. Can I ask you about this fatal of this, uh, this driver? Yep. On the line. I mean, he was trying to save people's lives and has lost things yep. in that. It is. It's a great tragedy, and uh, as I said, that uh, I think it highlights the uh, the uh, impact on our community, where there are so many people, uh, not just emergency service personnel, but uh, volunteers, council workers, uh, people uh, trying to uh, undergo their businesses to maintain what is uh, some normality for people and put normality back into people's lives. Uh, this is a tragedy that is huge and it will have a great impact on the community and the family and uh, so at the start our thoughts and, and prayers are actually with the family and the community because uh, it is a great tragedy. Uh, look, I'm not sure about that capacity. Um, it only happened this morning and uh, we were advised early before we came to speak to you today. Yes, it did, yeah. No, sorry, no, not water over the road. We're not sure about that. We do know that the uh, the gentleman was actually hauling water for the condomine community, which is, a, again, a very precious resource, although there's a lot on the ground. Potable water, drinking water, is a very precious commodity at the moment in these communities. Thanks so much for your time. No, thank you very much indeed. Start there for a second, Certainly. Just colleague.